and my dear colleagues, Assalamu Alaikum. Today I am going to present my paper on climate smart soil, fertilizer and water management practice for crop reduction in Bangladesh. Um, the outline of presentation is climate smart agriculture, climate smart soil, water, fertilizer management and the conclusion. We know the soil and climate is very connected because our healthy soil is directly connected with the food for greater availability of nutrients and improved yields. With the climate, it uh, secures more soil, uh, soil carbon and uh, reduce greenhouse gas emission. And with the water, it uh, uh, increases water uh, retention and supply in the soil. If we see the IPCC 2014 Global Greenhouse Gas Emission, we see the agriculture sector uh, contribute more in uh, greenhouse gas emission. So the contributors of agriculture greenhouse gases are more, that is uh, enteric fermentation, manual left on pasture, like the synthetic fertilizer, etc. And we know our Bangladesh is uh, dependent on rice and from the rice paddy field there are uh, methane emission from the uh, flooding, uh, flooded fields. And so the main resource of crop production is soil, where fertilizer and water are the major inputs for crop production. And conventional soil fertilizer and water management practice emit remarkable amount of greenhouse gas in the environment. So we go for the climate smart agriculture. This climate smart agriculture has three main pillars. That is the sustainability increasing agriculture productivity and income. That is the productivity and food security and the adaptation and mitigation. Now I am. Uh, I want to. Uh, uh, I want to show the difference between the climate smart agriculture and the conventional agriculture practice, and mainly the uh, increased use of fertilizer, pesticides, and herbicides, highly dependent, very inefficiently applied in conventional system, whereas it is uh, a, a use increased efficiently of fertilizer and water use of organic fertilizer. So there is many difference between the two technologies. And this is some uh, scenario of greenhouse gas emission source or removals and process in managed ecosystem in the world. Now the climate smart soil management. We know the uh, numerous soils related problems have already been identified so far. There's one of the is depletion of soil fertility, gradual degradation of soil organic matter, and uh, low soil water retentivity, soil compaction, also soil sanitation, acidification, erosion, etc. Through climate smart soil management, the benefits of, uh, of this uh, management is require less quantity of energy, conserve soil moisture, sequester carbon in soil and emitting less quantity of greenhouse gas. Here uh, we use the TLS management practice. We know that TLS may lead to high erosion rates exceeding 30 to 100 ton per hectare per year. So soil erosion can be prevented or uh, reduced with conservation agriculture and minimum tillage. So the, to combat the climate change effect on agriculture and soil health, conservation agriculture practice like minimum tillage practice perform well for soil health and environment. This conservation agriculture is a crop management system based on three principles. That is minimal soil disturbance, cover crops, and diversified crop rotation. And if you uh, refer to as resource efficient or resource effective agriculture. Conservation tillage requires less energy for uh, cultivation and this practice can minimize the rapid breakdown of plant residues. It increases carbon sequestration and carbon dioxide emission is 40-44% less than conventional tillage system. 
and here in this system we use the zero tillage or minimum minimum tillage here no till farming or minimum uh, tillage it simultaneously sown seed and reply fertilizer without tilling the soil reducing organic carbon loss from soil and reduce greenhouse gas emission and bari developed zero tillage planter operated by a power tiller and in case of strip tillage we use minimum tillage bari develop strip till planter for strip tillage cultivation wheat lentil mugbin field in north and northern western areas of bangladesh here we see when you uh, methane emission pattern from breed 28 rice variety under different tillage operation that is conventional and minimum tillage we see that methane emission trends were lower in uh, minimum tillage as compared to uh, conventional tillage tillage manuals practice comparative use of diesel fuel on conventional and reduced tillage system we here we see that in uh, conservation uh, tillage the carbon dioxide emission reduced to 44.4 kg per hectare per year another is counter plowing popular in hill tracks districts of bangladesh it is replacing the traditional zone cultivation it reduces soil erosion in hills and conserves soil moisture bari developed dibbler for counter plowing incorporate crop residue it is a good practice for soil moisture conservation and to protect the soil from erosion water runoff and evaporation it improves soil carbon stock and recycle soil nutrients our ex, uh, research show that strip tillage is helpful in increasing soil moisture providing with higher yield for chickpea and maize mulching mulching is a layer of material with rice straw wheat straw etc applied to the surface of the soil it is uh, it reduces the evaporation and thereby retaining soil moisture in drought prone soil and in saline soil it restricts the capillary rise of saline water by restricting evaporation from surface soil hence reduce gag emission so saline soil management reclamation of soil sanity through minimization of capillary movement we, is, uh, we use the uh, mulch and also use of uh, biochar in saline soil it protects the salinity diversified crop rotation if we use the diversified crop in our uh, sequence crop issues in the year the uh, field is almost uh, occupied by the crops and no uh, carbon dioxide emission uh, occurs here sandbar cropping it is a cultivation method may name sandbar cropping to produce winter vegetable especially pumpkin in the chore land this is the method which in which farmers be, dig holes in sandy land and fill them with manure compost and seals enhance carbon sequestration this is the system now we go for the climate smart water management practice this practice uh, is a variable like rain water harvesting deep irrigation and fertigation sprinkler irrigation alternate um, you know, wetting and drying and etc the benefits is require less quantity of water increase water use efficiency require less quantity of energy conserve soil moisture emitting less quantity of greenhouse gas this this is the alternate wetting and drying uh, in our uh, bangladesh uh, we depend on rice so the rice require uh, more water than the 6 um, to 7 times more water than the uh, upland crop and uh, about uh, 300 to uh, 3000 liter irrigation water is needed for 1 kg of rice production so uh, many water saving technique uh, occurs in among them alternate wetting and drying uh, system is more popular it is water saving technology capable to reduce irrigation water requirement of rice about 20 to 38% water could be saved with a reduction in yield it generates multiple benefits related to methane emission reduction reducing water use and uh, increasing productivity and contributing to food security potentially reduce methane emission by 11 to 45% compared to continuous flooding of rice fields methane emission pattern in bari dhan 28 and different water management practice we see they are considering methane emission and grain yield of bari dhan 28 alternate wet and drying 
could be practiced under both um, uh, conventional tillage and minimum tillage. Fertigation through drip irrigation. Fertigation is the system where fert uh, irrigation, fertilizer is used uh, with the irrigation and drip irrigation is irrigation drop by drop. So if we uh, use the fertigation through drip irrigation, it is uh, the fertilizer and neutral loss is minimized due to localized application and reduced leaching, reduce the risk of crop exposed to drought. And uh, drip irrigation has been practiced on high value crops such as vegetables, fruit trees, and ornamentals. This uh, some pictorial view of the fertigation through drip irrigation. Rainwater harvesting is another climate smart water management. This op optimizes the use of rainwater for supplemental irrigation, increase water use efficiency, reduce fossil fuel requirement for irrigation. Now the climate smart fertilizer management. Climate smart fertilizer management use of more organic manure like cow dung, poultry manure, compost, vermicompost, trichocompost, use of organic amendment like biochar, increasing nutrients use efficiency like use of urea super granule, and picket bracket, neem coated urea, leaf color chart for nitrogen application in rice, and use of biofertilizer and green manure. The benefits is require less quantity of energy, no energy for organic manure, sequester carbon in soil and emitting less quantity of greenhouse gas. Urea super granule. Uh, urea super granule is, uh, technology is cost effective and environment friendly. It reduces nitrogen losses as ammonia volatilization and nitrous oxide emission. USD could be considered as a climate smart technology in Bangladesh. Body developed USD applicator for deep placement of USD in paddy field. Here we see that uh, comparative nitrous oxide emission from USD as deep placement and field urea in rice field here, uh, the nitrous oxide emission is higher in when we use the field urea than urea so UDP. Field urea and urea super granule uh, should be applied under AWD condition to keep less methane emission from agriculture and global climate change. The new uh, uh, technology is neem coated urea. The urea is coated with uh, neem uh, seed oil to prevent its misuse as well as puts the fertilizer in slow release mode, thereby nourishing the saplings for a longer period. And it improved nitrogen efficiency and consequently crop yield, enhancing nitrogen efficiency and reduce DAG emission. Global warming potential from wheat crop when we use the USD NPK briquet and pill urea in our wheat crop, we see that the total global warming potential during wheat cultivation is higher in pill urea applied field and lower in USD applied field. Total uh, nitrous oxide flux from potato fuel here also we uh, found that the pre urea create more uh, nitrous oxide emission in potato field. Indicated nutrient management. This is the site specific indicated nutrient management. It provides an op approach for the timely application of fertilizer at optimal rates to fill the deficit between the nutrient needs of a high yielding crops and the nutrient supply from naturally occurring indigenous sources. It enhances food um, security and um, reduces GAG emission and fertilizer cost and environment pollution. Leaf color chart. For rice production, it is special for the rice nitrogen fertilization using life color chart LCC. For rice production, it is becoming very popular. Organic manure management. Managing soil organic matter for soil carbon sequestration and practice that increase carbon input soil is bioslurry, compost, vermicompost, trichocompost, biochar, biofertilizer. Through integrated nutrient management system, that is IPNS, degraded soil can be recovered with increased crop yield as it contains inorganic and organic fertilizer. This is the bio slurry. When we use the bio slurry, we found also the biogas. For vegetable production, cow dung based bio slurry at the rate of 5 ton per hectare or poultry liter based bio slurry 3 ton per hectare is recommended. 
uh, we uh, found that the total carbon dioxide emission from the rice field under different organic residual manage management among the sources, poultry manure emitted more carbon dioxide than cow dung, rice straw with IPNS management. Apparent carbon balance in rice season under different organic materials, we see that the um, uh, carbon balance is more in rice straw with IPNS system. Vermicompost. In this system, uh, uh, the uh, vermicompost is the process by which worms are used to convert organic materials, usually waste, into a humus like material known as vermicompost. It provides nutrients to the soil. It, re it reduces the dependence on synthetic fertilizer and reduces GAG emission and fertilizer cost. Biochar. It is a stable carbon-rich form of charcoal that can be produced by pyrolysis, a process in which biomass is heated with little or no oxygen. It is soil amendment, more than 60% carbon is here. Carbon sequestration as it is a stable, solid and sustained thousands of years. It also acts as liming material, reduce GAG emission. In, in BARI, we uh, have research with the biochar because it is a climate aspect technology for carbon sequestration in soil and we use the uh, different type of source like rice straw, rice husk, maize stover, mustard stover and the uh, wheat straw, poultry men, etc. Here production of biochar using different available source and fabricated biochar in early stages we used the drum and, the, and we found the produce biochar and recently we introduced the electric biochar device at Bard Soils Division. We have free uh, field experiment for amending problem soils and improving crop yields in Belabu or Godagari with different organic materials. We see that the organic amendment increased soil pH in Bilabo, so soil acidity was decreased. Soil acidity was decreased the most with the uh, poultry manure biochar. Here, uh, uh, the post-harvest soil pH and organic carbon status. Here we see that the different organic amendment changed the soil pH towards neutrality. Organic amendments increased soil organic carbon the comparatively higher soil organic carbon was from biochar treated plot. Organic amendment increased seed yield of mustard in Godagari Rashi. Here we see that the highest seed yield of mustard was produced in biochar treated plot. That is 1.45 ton per hectare. Biofertilizer. Use of biofertilizer for crop protection uh, for replenish, uh, replenish soil biodiversity. And in uh, soil cell division BARI, the microbiology section uh, produced the soil tolerant biofertilizer production for soybean and groundnut and uh, many more. Here we see the effect of biofertilizer on yield of legume here uh, about uh, 10 to 65 percent uh, yield increase over control in a different legume crop using the suitable strain of biofertilizer. Sorry. Green manuring, uh, uh, growing of green manure crops and then turning of these crops directly in the field by plowing in the field, SOAT make the field rich and in nitrogen, which is the most efficient nutrient of the soil. It increases soil fertility, organic matter, and reduce GAG emission and fertilizer cost. So the conclusion from my presentation can be, climate smart soil fertilizer and water management practice not only reduce greenhouse gas emission, but also help in increasing soil fertility and crop productivity and thereby improving environment. Promotion of USG, NPK briquette and neem coated urea to reduce nitrous oxide emission, conservation agriculture, institute of conventional agriculture to reduce GAG, organic manure like vermicompost, bioslurry and biochar to sequester soil carbon and thereby carbon, di carbon dioxide reduction, improve nutrient use efficiency of chemical fertilizer and promote biofertilizer to reduce demand of chemical fertilizer. Thank you for patient hearing. Thank you very much. If anybody any questions, number one questions I can allow.
Professor M.D. Tafajalus Islam. He's a renowned scientist. I know him very well. He is a Humboldt fellow and a JSP fellow, perhaps. Professor Tafajal Islam. Honorable uh, Chairperson Professor Kamrul Hassan, uh, distinguished uh, participants, uh, welcome to my talk, Impacts of Climate Change on Epidemic of Wheat Blast Disease in Asia and its Threat to Global Food and Nutritional Security in South Asia. Uh, first, I would like to uh, tell you the role of environment on disease outbreak in crops because climate change has been posing a serious threat not only uh, our life but also in crop production uh, creating serious biotic and abiotic stresses disease outbreak has uh, in last 50 years increased fourfold and impact of climate change on epidemic outbreak of wheat blast it is a new problem in asia in 2016, we experienced a dangerous disease in our second major food crop, wheat. I shall tell you uh, its uh, situation. And wheat is really a big uh, uh, you know, problem uh, due to Ukraine and Russia war. Uh, and I shall uh, share with you our story of genomics and open data sharing and open science uh, to determine the origin of the wheat blast outbreak, first wheat blast outbreak in Bangladesh in 2016. And how we are addressing by using genomics, genome editing and international collaboration for mitigating uh, the wheat blast disease in uh, uh, the changing climate of Bangladesh. Uh, we all know that uh, uh, our agriculture, the age is around 12, 10 to 12,000 years. And since the beginning, uh, people have grown crops and they have uh, battled with the, their many diseases. So disease is not uh, new. And especially uh, the environment affects whether uh, the uh, plant and pathogen wins many factors, uh, temperature, rainfall, wind, humidity, as well as other uh, environmental factors severely impact on wheat. Especially in case of disease, there is a known uh, uh, disease triangle, uh, pathogen, host, and environment. That means uh, to develop any disease, uh, the environment is a crucial factor among three major uh, factors involved in disease development. Emerging plant diseases in food security has been a serious problem. All of we know that in uh, uh, mid uh, 19th century, uh, uh, Irish potato famine destroyed uh, potato crops for uh, three consecutive years, which is known as Irish, uh, uh, you know, great uh, uh, potato famine. And that caused two million people uh, killed and two million people migrated uh, due to uh, plant disease. There were several uh, similar famine. Even in our country, we had also famine. I am not going to detail uh, more, but uh, potato uh, as well as rice blast, potato late blight, and recently uh, wheat rust, and recently wheat blast is a big threat for uh, uh, human uh, food security. As we know that uh, human population is increasing dramatically, and it is estimated that by 2050, uh, our uh, world population would be around 9.7 billion, and in Bangladesh, population uh, is estimated to increase 250 million. In that case, our food production needs to increase nearly uh, uh, 70 to 100 percent. And one of the causal uh, threat is uh, the uh, disease. And uh, I, I am going to show you one of the deadliest disease now we are experiencing in Bangladesh, that is wheat blast. It appeared in Bangladesh in 2016 and devastated 15,000 hectares of wheat. 
it, and yield loss was up to 100%. Government decided to burn the crop, but burning the crop is not a solution for solving a fungal disease because it has already been established. It was first, uh, uh, you know, destroyed 15% of our wheat crop uh, in eight districts, uh, but uh, later uh, it moved other uh, districts. Here you can see, uh, Overnight, you know, uh, flower, when wheat uh, blossom, that is a spike initiated, uh, overnight the crops destroyed. You can see the uh, background green, but wheat spikes became white, no grain. It is a, a, a really a panicked disease. And disease is, disease is caused by Magna Porte or Isitriticum. And why it was big panic for us? Because it has never been in Asia or other continents except South America. Because in South America, it has been a serious problem since 1985. And Important of wheat, you all know that 20% of calorie and 25% protein requirement of human are satisfied by the wheat. Uh, and in Bangladesh, wheat is the second most important cereal crop, and we need 7 million tons of wheat, but uh, we produce only 1.5 or less million tons. This is why every year we need to, uh, you know, import 60 million or more wheat, and this year it is a very big problem because of, you know, Ukraine and Russia war. So uh, uh, even India, you know, blocked uh, their wheat export. Uh, when this disease first appeared in Bangladesh, our, uh, you know, question was, what we, uh, uh, wheat blast in Bangladesh, uh, we hypothesized that it may be caused by a native blast fungus uh, through a mutation or host jump. And we had another hypothesis that somehow it moved from South America. And here you can see a photograph of uh, Sufyan Kamon, uh, one of the smartest scientists, biologists in the world. And he uh, collaborated with us uh, to apply genomic technology in the field condition we call field pathogenomics to pinpoint the disease. We use the smartest field pathogenomics a process that is next generation sequencing to sequence a large population of the samples collected in the, all the fields. But when we got the data, uh, uh, then it was a big problem to make a conclusion because in the Nas uh, National Gene Bank, that is NCBI, there were only wheat blast sequence. So we could not make the precise conclusion. Then we changed our strategy. We uh, put all of our wheat blast data in open wheat blast website, the raw sequence data, so that other people who have the sequence data worldwide, they can download and compare the data and it worked very fantastically, and scientists all over the world from four continents, 31 scientists participated without any project funding, and we made a precise conclusion that our wheat blast came from South America. And it was unfortunate that just two years before the wheat blast occurrence, Bangladesh imported two million tons of wheat from uh, uh, Brazil, and possibly that brought the uh, cars. And wheat blast, our wheat blast news, actually we use the open science and open data sharing approaches. And it was supported by nature and science to engage the global scientific community. And we successfully, uh, you know, made the conclusion that the origin of wheat blast in Bangladesh is caused by the South American lineage of Magna Porte or, or IZ. And we made this conclusion within six weeks and within uh, you know, within uh, uh, three months, we published the paper in BMC Biology, and that, you know, discovery helped us to make policy decision, because in South America, they have been fighting against the wheat blast in 35 years, so we got all of their experiences and deployed uh, in our field, and this is why next year, or uh, consecutive years, there are no wheat blast. We analyzed why in eight districts we experienced the wheat blast, not other districts. Unfortunately, you know, wheat we cultivate in winter, but winter is drier. But uh, unfortunately, eight districts experience, uh, you know, 
untimely rainfall and rainfall is necessary because moisture is very essential for penetration of the fungus to the plant. So we analyzed the data and we made the conclusion. Here is uh, some other, you know, rainfall and humidity and other data we analyzed. Now the question is, uh, 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 the, what are the ideal condition of wheat blast? We already analyzed temperature, 18 to 30 degrees Celsius is essential, and plant must be wait for at least 30 hours, either precipitation, rainfall, or dew, and uh, high humidity, obviously necessary, and mild to strong wind, because it can uh, transport to the wind uh, around six to eight kilometers, we estimated over these years. And most important carrier of this disease is the seed or grain. And in case of wheat, food grain also can be germinated. So actually, we didn't import, uh, you know, uh, seed from South America. We imported the grain. Anyway, uh, here you can see wheat producing country. The number one wheat producing country in China, number two is uh, India in the world. And uh, uh, do, uh, these two countries is not far from here. And if we blast move to South, uh, you know, uh, these two countries, even Pakistan is one of the top wheat producing country, then it would be terrible. And before it becomes to the catastrophic, how can we tackle this disease and find the mitigation? Unfortunately, there is no resistant variety and no fungicide can be effective against the disease. There are some uh, studies on different countries to understand the you know, suitability of this disease in other countries. In US, many states, I have shown the figure, and in South Asia, 65% of our land are suitable uh, or environment is favorable for the wheat blast. So we must need, in our country, you know, 20 districts already been uh, you know, um, contaminated because it is spreading. So our wheat uh, yield is increased, uh, decreased significantly for this disease, and our import is increased, uh, you see, dramatically increased over these years. This is why we must find the solution. And it has been reported that in many newspapers, it has already moved to India, although Indian government has not officially been declared. And it has already been in, uh, you know, just after two years, uh, it moved to Zambia, a, 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 an African country. And we analyzed the, you know, 400 genomes, and we found that Bangladesh isolate as well as Jamaican one, they are uh, cousin and very close. We are now preparing a paper for the science. Now, uh, I would like to tell you how can we tackle this disease? Uh, when we search the resistant genes, we found that only few genes are resistant against the wheat blast. And we collected the genes from uh, uh, the uh, you know, germ plasm from Prof Professor Yuku Tosha because he has the RMG8 and RMGGR119 genes. And we introduced uh, these genes into our wheat variety. And we found some, you know, F3 population as well as Backcross 2 uh, uh, population. Hopefully, within a couple of years, uh, uh, our variety would carry the uh, resistance genes and we can make a solution. This is one of the way. Another uh, big problem was there was no, you know, detection method. You know, in case of coronavirus, RT-PCR technique was used as a gold standard. But in case of wheat blast, there was no detection method. This is why Bangladesh experienced that disease. So in collaboration with Ohio State University Professor Gu Liang Wang and Chinese Academy of Science, we finally developed a fantastic technique like your uh, um, pregnancy strip. Within 30 minutes, you can detect this uh, wheat blast by using genomic-based uh, and CRISPR-Cas technology, world sophisticated technology we used. And now these techniques are being, uh, you know, on the way to deploy in the quarantine offices all over the world. So uh, another uh, approach we use the gene editing uh, to make uh, our wheat, you know, resistant against the blood. Gene editing means uh, this is the latest technology, you know, in 2020, two ladies got the Nobel Prize. So gene editing, crispr cas gene editing, we used to edit the wheat and we found, uh, you know, several thousand lines and they are now under uh, screening for getting the uh, real uh, blast resistant uh, lines. 
So uh, we also uh, had another approach that is biological control. Uh, uh, and out of 650 bacteria uh, discovered from the wheat seeds, we found some of them are fantastic tool to uh, uh, you know, uh, control the wheat blast about 80%. Uh, we tested them in three years in uh, the hotspot uh, in Meherpur. So last uh, 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 technique we used the Nenu technology. Nenu pesticide in collaboration with uh, Professor Yukio Tosha, one of the famous Nenu architect in uh, University of Queensland. He designed a materials titanium dioxide P25 Nenu materials, which is photocatalytic uh, uh, compound in presence of uh, sunlight. It can produce reactive oxygen species and can control the wheat blast. And this paper has recently been accepted in uh, uh, bulletin of uh, uh, Japanese Chemical Society, very high impact journal. So this is my last slide. Uh, take home message, the global climate change significantly impacts on epidemic outbreak of plant diseases. The most important example is wheat blast. And open data sharing and open science are fantastic approach to rapidly tackling any plant health emergency due to climate change as we are facing like human health emergency. And we urge global scientific community to join our fight against the wheat blast fungus before it becomes catastrophic. Uh, we must find a solution. Uh, and otherwise, it would be a serious problem, not only in Asia, for the global food security. Thank you so much. And I am very much thankful to lots of international collaborators. Uh, and uh, I am also thankful to my team members. And thank you very much for patience hearing. Thank you very much. I think this type of scientists we have need to have for coming Ukraine and Russia, where and we can expand the wheat definitely in our country. Thank you so much. Any questions for one? Okay. If anybody questions, then uh, you, uh, you can contact Tofajal directly. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much, sir. Professor Tofajal. And I think you can continue your research work in good shape. <coughs> Next uh, presenter. A.R.M. Suleiman, Department of Soil Science, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mojibur Rahman, Agriculture University, Gajibur. The same, same place. With the permission of the chair. Okay. Uh, the announcement is that this paper actually was, but yeah. he interchanged with Professor Suleiman. Suleiman paper uh, supposed to be the next session. So he. I have he already came. informed. Yeah. Okay. I that is why I declared. Yeah. Honorable Chairman, uh, fellow scientists, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. My presentation is on soil microorganisms in sustainable crop production in Bangladesh. You know, the fertility of soil of so Bangladesh is declining day by day. There are lots of reasons behind this. Chemical fertilizer, although increase crop production, but create environmental pollution. Concern is growing about the long-term sustainability of agriculture. Integrated plant nutrient system approach using organic, inorganic, organic, and biofertilizer is a good option to adopt. Soil microorganism add nutrients through nitrogen fixation, solubilizing phosphorus and stimulating plant growth substances. They provide eco-friendly organic agro input and are most cost effective than chemical fertilizer. Sustainable agriculture requires optimal use of optimal use and management of soil fertility and soil physical properties, both of which rely on soil biological processes and soil microorganisms. 
it is therefore important to know the types of microorganism present in soil and to assess their functions in agro ecosystem the diversity of soil microorganisms especially bacteria and fungi and their functions in soil pollen system will be discussed here this is the soil food web you know there are lots of microorganism under the soil uh, uh, we need the soil and on the top of the soil there are some micro organism this is what the soil microorganism looks like you know it's, there is no detail here but this is an schematic diagram see the functions of microorganism you know if we consider uh, soil health these are the organism in the you know the rhizobium azospirilla vesila pseudomonas cerasia and so on these are the microorganisms that contribute to the soil health soil health also belongs to you know the soil plant growth parameters promotion as for example photosynthesis yield resistance to pathogen biological fertilizer by control of disease restoration of water lands wasteland soil bioremediation and so on so this is a sustainable if we go for sustainable agriculture we will have to consider the soil microorganism the what are the rules of soil microorganism in our agro ecosystem we normally uh, these are the, uh, the some microorganism that fix atmospheric nitrogen both in symbiotic and non symbiotic way by availability of plant nutrients and plant growth promotion de decomposition of organic matter biodegradation and bioremediation by control of plant disease these are the main functions of the microorganism that plays in soil if we come the first one nitrogen fixing bacteria uh, there are two types of bacteria one is symbiotic others are non symbiotic in symbiotic group there are many organism like rhizobium bradyrhizobium elorhizobium azospirillum azorhizobium and so on and in non symbiotic nitrogen fixation we have azotobacter azospirillum acetobacter and so on there are many organism some organism we call nitrogen fixing organism nitrogen fix nitrogen transforming bacteria if we apply nitrogen there are some organism that plays role in soil that convert nitrogen to is a if we apply urea there are some organism that release urea's enzyme so they transfer nitrogen from urea to plant available form ammonia or nitrate some organism we call denitrifying bacteria there are lots of bacteria that denitrify nitrogen in soil and this is just a, 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 a scenario that shows nodules in different crop and the below is the culture cultural growth of the organism we know there are lots of bacteria and archaea in soil mainly you see the bacillus is the rod shaped a spirillum is a is type of you know is in a spiral type and coccus is a round shape these are the organ this is main organism we found in soil this is one kind of nodule is formed by actinomyces or we call frankia nodule is normally formed by rhizobium but this is an you know exceptional type of nodule formed by uh, actinomyces and the nodule another the, the bottom one nodule shows in sesvania rostata is doinsa we call and uh, it is formed in the stem of the uh, uh, plant this is mycorrhizal fungi that you know extend the root system of a plant and make unavailable phosphorus to available form well the phosphorus which is available uh, uh, you know the, uh, beside the root they come in contact with the root with the help of mycorrhiza fungi there are lots of fungi that also that are also you know some are co we call molds mildews rust smarts yeast mushroom we call these are they, they are also responsible for soil fertility you know their number is not as uh, as high as bacteria but still they they come in and uh, tend to the earth or something like that they dominate in acid soil the main fungus found in soil is penicillium trichoderma aspergilla fusarium mucor and so on alternaria and other also blue green algae this is another organism that also responsible for fixing nitrogen in peri soil 
normally in rice. Uh, they are not numer numerically as high as fungi, bacteria, or actinomyces, but still they have uh, uh, they play a good, good role in soil. The main organism we found is Oscillatoria, Nostoc, Anabena, Skytonema, Fisarella, Calothrix, Tolibothrix, etc. These are the blue green algae, genus of the blue green algae that are found in soil and they are responsible for fixing atmospheric nitrogen. Actinomyces, I also already showed one slide, uh, uh, Frankia, that fixes atmospheric nitrogen in other, other than legume. Protozoa, there are some protozoa found in soil. They feed the noxious microorganism and make soil you know, in, a harmonia, in a harmonial condition. Plant disease controlling microorganism, there are some microorganisms we call Trichoderma, Asbrascular mycorrhiza, even Rhizobium, they can control plant disease. You know, we normally apply chemical fertilizer, chemicals to protect uh, pathogen, but there are some organisms, they, uh, they are also good for controlling plant disease. Microbes responsible for degradation of pesticide. We apply pesticide every day, the indiscriminately in, in, the, in our agricultural land. These pesticides are degraded by some microorganism. You know, uh, the, uh, the, there are lots of microorganisms that are, who are responsible for degrading the pesticide to make the pesticide uh, uh, from toxic to non-toxic form and to make it plant nutrient even. Then the, 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 then the nutrients are taken by the plant. So this is a good mechanism, you know, that plays the microorganism. This is a diversity of soil fauna. I am not going to discuss soil fauna, but I will discuss soil uh, flora. These are the microorganism, you know, the earthworm, also that plays a good role in soil. Uh, uh, the soil fauna, I am not discussing much about this, but they have the function to make the soil. They are responsible for soil porosity, aeration, infiltration, distribution of organic matter. These are the functions done by the soil fauna. What are the functions done by the soil microbes? My, my biodiversity, both macro and micro, they have got supporting function as for example decomposition, nutrient cycling, soil formation, primary production and water cycling, regulatory service, climate regulation, water regulation, disease regulation, pest regulation, water purification, erosion regulation, and air quality regulation. Provisioning function, food, water, fresh water, fuel, wood, fiber, genetic resources, medicine and pharmaceutical, cultural function, such aesthetic, spiritual, educational and recreational. What not? Microbes has lots of function, you know, we don't know, but we don't uh, uh, visualize, but they are doing their function in, uh, you know, in our, uh, in our absence or in our out of, out of our knowledge, they are, you know, making lots of function in, in, inside the soil. These are the, if we consider, you know, human well-being, terrestrial life, diversity, clean water and aquatic life, climate regulation, all these functions they are, the microbes are doing. If we consider bacteria, the bacteria, uh, you, know, uh, 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 you know, making all these uh, categories of functions, fungi also, but other organisms, they are doing some, some of the function and some of the, some, uh, not all, but some of the functions. Threats to soil biodiversity, you know, that's why the important role of soil microorganism that plays to the ecosystem. There are lots of, you know, threats uh, and this biodiversity less, receive far less research and media attention and legal protection. We know the microbes are doing so, so much, so many works, but less research and media attention and legal protection is, uh, you know, is common. There are numerous causes of loss of soil microorganism, lots of, you know, where the microbes are lost, uh, are lost from the soil, as for example, erosion, land use change, climate change, habitat fragmentation, intensive human exploitation, unsustainable soil management practices, invasive species, both above and below ground, the loss of phenomena of fertility and uh, decline in organic matter, compaction, salinization, flooding, landslides, pollution, soil sealing and urbanization. These are the causes that uh, you know, decrease the number of organisms in soil. You see the microbes are uh, getting decreased, you know, mycorrhiza, fungi, bacteria, nematode, other microbes. Every 
you know, all the organisms are number is decreasing day by day because of, you know, many, many, many conditions, uh, also environmental conditions. Protecting soil microorganisms, a number of actions that could reduce the risk of damage to ecosystem, ecological receptor and to humans. Land reclamation, you know, if we use, you know, the land, if we reclaim land regularly, then, then it will reduce the, pro, uh, 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 it will protect soil organism. Environmental restoration, if you rest, uh, restore the environment properly and halting exposure to sources of pollution. You know, there are lots of sources of pollution. If you can reduce the pollution, in, uh, it can be reduced in many ways, then we can, you know, protect our organism or microorganism. Protecting existing natural areas, restoring degraded habitats, employing sustainable agricultural practices, and embracing urban biodiversity. We can add different, uh, you know, the organic material that can increase the number of microorganisms. As for example, you know, adding organic material, covering soil with living vegetation and or crop residues, reduce tillage intensity. You have seen some slide uh, 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 presented by Professor Sh uh, Dr. Shohal Akhtar. You know, reduce tillage reduce tillage act intensity practices that reduce soil erosion, compaction, good nutrient management practices, leaving some untouched area in the field as habitat for plant and animal diversity, can enhance soil microorganisms and improve soil health. Now some research finding the, uh, from the NARS organization, uh, yes, for example, Bari, Biri, different universities, I will show some slide. This is the practical work, the research work already. This is the findings, measured research uh, findings. More than, I am talking about uh, at, at this moment, the findings uh, uh, we have received from Bongo Bundu Shak Muzi Urman Agricultural University, where I was uh, serving for a long time. Uh, more than 20 students, including 8 students, were awarded PhD degree, and 13 students were awarded MS degree in the field of soil microbiology that we are uh, uh, talking about. Overall findings showed that, showed growth and yield enhancement of the crops and improvement of soil health by using microorganisms. These are the overall findings. I will show some, some slide, slides. Effect of beneficial soil microorganisms, including bacteria, fungi, soil microbial biomass, using different crops, as for example, pulses, different pulses, oil seeds, cereals, brinjal, onion, and sugarcane are studied. More than 70 research articles have been published using the findings obtained from different aspects of soil microorganism in various international and national journals. This is one uh, uh, slide showing how microbes are you know, working. You can show in, uh, clearly in the next slide. This is, uh, you can see in one, uh, what we had applied 100% nitrogen in the left side 50% nitrogen and in the middle we applied 50% nitrogen and in addition to nitrogen we have added microorganism we call rhizobium uh, BULS6 so you can compare the growth of the plant rice plant you know uh, in three slides even the growth of 50% uh, the growth of the uh, rice in presence of 50% nitrogen plus rhizobium, it shows me uh, increased uh, higher growth than the growth obtained with 100% nitrogen. You can have a look there. So there is a good uh, influence of the organism. This is the root growth of the same experiment. You can, in the left side is the control where there is no organism, but in the other side, you know, we added uh, in different doses of nitrogen, also microorganism. Another experiment we have seen, uh, you see the absolute control in the left and 50% urea plus another organism, rhizobium. In the, mid, in the middle, absolute control, first one, and 75% urea plus rhizobium. And uh, the, uh, the extreme right, absolute control plus 50% urea plus 50% rhizobium. So you, see, you see the growth of, you can compare the growth uh, uh, with the control, you know. If we add, uh, some sort of microorganism, we call it rhizobium here. So it, it increased uh, plant growth, rice growth extensively. 
another experiment 75 percent N nitrogen and the middle one is 75 percent nitrogen plus bacillus you know, one of the bacillus strain and 75 percent uh, nitrogen with another bacillus strain you can also compare the growth of the you know increased growth with the uh, by, by with the addition of the microorganism in the left right side 100 percent nitrogen 100 percent nitrogen plus bacillus 100 percent nitrogen another bacillus strain so you, you can also compare the growth if we apply microorganism you will get in, uh, increased in growth the, this is the uh, harvesting stage the, the first one is the vegetative stage the last one is the uh, harvesting stage uh, you can also compare the yield enhance, in, uh, enhancement with the microbes this is one of the one experiment with sugar cane uh, much data is not available here but uh, we can show some data later on another experiment with green gel you see the uh, uh, control there is no organism in the left side you see we have a dead uh, uh, one bacteria so it increased virinzal growth you can compare in all the slides in a control with the organism so in every cases we got higher yield with the organism this is uh, the scenario of a uh, uh, well I'll, I'll go first yeah thank you the scenario of uh, you know uh, the polluted soil in Gazipur how microbes are affected with this you know with this pollution research findings of BAU I'll go in first because maybe I'm running out of time uh, conserve, their, their findings are conservation tillage optimum fertilizer application and crop residue retention increased microbial biomass legume, legume rice rice based pattern had higher bacterial and fungal uh, diversity than cereal based pattern soil enzyme activity was decreased with increase of and fertilizer dose some findings from Sinaga University, you know, they have, they have shown that azotobacter, nitrogen, uh, nitrosomonas, nitrobacter, renatifying bacteria were increased or related to total N content and pH of the forest soil. Earth one was the most, most uh, prevalent organism in uh, soil, in forest soil, uh, then followed by the mites. Inoculation of rice straw uh, impact on soil salinity and increased microbial activity. Microbial parameters are higher in indigenous plant than the exotic plant. These are scientists of Bari, they have uh, got lots of experiment. I will just uh, show, uh, well, they, they have shown, you know, the positive effect of inoculation with rhizobium, radiorhizobium, and also with the palmy compost, azotobacter. So they, these are some slides, you know, uh, uh, these are scientists of agriculture, Bangladesh Agriculture Research Institute, Jodhpur. You can see, have a look in the sick pea uh, with the biofertilizer, sick pea, uh, tomato with uh, arboscolor mycorrhizae, and onion with arboscolor mycorrhizae, and the sick pea with arboscolor mycorrhizae, and biofertilizer plus barmi compost, you know, another product, barmi compost is another type of compost, also in, uh, influence plant growth, biofertilizer plus arboscolor mycorrhizae, and with in groundnut. There are some slides was, uh, produced by, you know, these are findings from Bari, the groundnut, uh, uh, tomato, you know, the mook bean, by, and by control of disease in grass pea. Mm -hmm. Another experiment with the onion, uh, with the azotobacter, the another microorganism, positive influence. This is the, the in a graphi graphical form. These are findings of Biri, I am coming, uh, coming to the end. Biri, yeah, organic matter increased uh, number of nitrogen fixing bacteria and some slide you know it's a long term experiment you know they have conducted this ex experiment for 35 years that see the result here you know if we apply balanced fertilizer only chemical fertilizer in the left side you see the balanced fertilizer then if we apply uh, integrated nutrient management approach with the cow dung or poultry, uh, poultry manure you will get higher yield compared to control and even compared to balanced fertilizer. So this has uh, got definitely good impact with integrated nutrient management that is there, the microbes are involved there. This is a bioorganic fertilizer produced by Bari, Biri. You see the result, you know, if we apply biofertilizer, you will get higher, much, much, much higher yield compared to the, uh, the, to the one that doesn't contain biofertilizer. Findings of Biri, another, you know, if we, apply poultry manure it sustains soil quality for, uh, by 95 percent and if we apply 
cow dung, it will uh, you know uh, improve the quality of soil by, by 80 percent. This is another information. Well, uh, this is the this slide shows uh, the, uh, the population of microbes in Bangladesh. Uh, the highest population was found in Kishurgan, 10 to the 9, followed by other areas. And uh, this is bio uh, bio based chemical fertilizer. You see that we use TSV. If we coat the TSV with bio fertilizer, that already uh, that also increases the yield of the rice plant. This is the bio fertilizer plus TSV. Bio organic fertilizer. This is finds of Bina. It's a felon without inoculation and felon with inoculation. Rice yield. I, I think uh, 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 there will be an, another presentation with this. 100% NPKS plus 75% uh, NPKS with. Uh, uh, Thank you so much. And Thank you so this much. Is, uh, this is for, yeah, this is the conclusion. Uh, just add one minute, one quick, a few seconds. Soil microbes, you know, improve new, uh, numerous ecosystem that improve soil fertility. Uh, the the in organisms are nitrogen fixing bacteria and such and such. Uh, increased level of human activity resulted in degradation of soil. Agriculture intensification affects soil microbes. Traditional soil microbes conservation friendly practices and IPNS approves can restore already degraded soil microbes and sustainable agriculture. Thank you all for patient hearing. Thank there you very some, much. If anybody question, please discussion with also. him. But I, I can call next person because we have a time stamp. <laughs> Mr. Sorry. Chairman, there is an announcement for the next person. Okay. Uh, Dr. Mondol now is in India for his treatment. Oh. Uh, I have a talk with him, uh. so we pray for him for his early recovery, okay. but he will be joining us on Zoom and another fellow on behalf of him, uh, Ashish Shutradhar, will be presenting the paper. He is here? He is here. Okay. Okay, please come in the dais and then... Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'd like to present uh, the productivity improvement opportunities in the polder of the climate vulnerable coastal zone to address future food security challenges of Bangladesh. So this is the uh, outline of the presentation, which is background. Uh, in the background, uh, we'll talk about the coastal zone, polar ecosystem, uh, potential of water resource production, cost of low uh, productivity, challenges in cropping intensification, product, uh, productivity versus food security, and the conclusion. So Bangladesh has achieved self-sufficiency in rice using green evolution technology, but the country faces uh, challenges to maintain food self-sufficient due to natural disaster and with population growth of 1.2% per year. The cropping intensity and productivity in government uh, in Bangladesh are already high. There is uh, little scope to further increase food production except the unutilized land of the coastal zone. So coastal zone is the most vulnerable region of the Ganges Delta. Uh, GOV already constructed 139 boulders to protect one point 2 million hectare low-lying area uh, of the coastal zone from the tidal flood, uh, saline water intrusion, and storm surge. So productivity is very low, uh, very low in here. So much uh, less than other part of the Bangladesh. So uh, this is the existing cropping practice in the polder. So uh, they uh, grow uh, traditional uh, cropping practice. There is a climate risk in here and the production is 2 to 7 ton per hectare, uh, which is rice equivalent production. Uh, we have uh, analyzed uh, three different uh, sanitary scenarios. Uh, one is uh, the low saline zone, medium saline zone and the high saline zone. Uh, this is uh, this uh, polder 43 by 2F situated in Borgona district, which is in low saline zone. We can see the 
salinity here that the salinity maximum salinity is 0.4 ppt in Pira River. So, if we uh, uh, improve our drainage condition uh, and manage the whole whole thing the uh, and uh, with the high yield variety so the crop can be grow up to uh, for the our shaman bro is 13 to 17 hectare per, uh, ton per hectare and rice is 10 to 12 ton per hectare maize 8 to 10 ton per hectare and sunflower 3 to 4 ton per hectare for the low saline area this is the uh, medium saline zone uh, which is polar 30 situated in uh, Khulna district. The salinity increases in here in February and uh, it uh, lasts up to uh, 12 ppt and decreases in uh, June. So uh, here the rice production uh, decreases little bit, the rice uh, production is 4 to 5 ton per hectare. Uh, maize 5 to 8 ton per hectare, sunflower 1.2 to 2.5 ton per hectare. These all are improved condition. The farmers uh, manage their drainage, uh, drainage from the field uh, and uh, use high yield variety. This is the high saline zone which is in, uh, situated in Shatkira district. Here the uh, Sanity below 2 ppt just last for the August uh, August to uh, Jan December. So uh, rest of the other time the sanity is more than 2 ppt. So here the farmer can uh, introduce high yield variety with salt tolerant uh, rice uh, with uh, water submergence uh, tolerance including fish or shim culture. So uh, the production for the high yield variety is 3 to 4 ton per hectare, shim 3 to 4, uh, 500 kg per hectare and fish 2 to 3 ton per hectare. So government of Bangladesh, NGOs and other development partners um, are um, imposing their uh, huge effort to develop the uh, the low productivity of coastal zone. What is the challenges? The challenge is salinity or water logging. So if we see the salinity scenarios in south central region, the fresh uh, the fresh water will remain fresh water up to 2050 for the climate change condition. Uh, in southwest region, uh, this is the combination of fresh water and saline water. If I talk about the saline uh, soil salinity, 75 percent of low and medium saline zone and 25 percent land is high saline in high saline zone. So there are some uh, soil tolerant crops and uh, others management practice. In high saline zone there is an opportunity to cultivate rice and fish, fish together year round uh, aquaculture. So uh, salinity could not be a major issue but if I talk uh, we talk about the water login uh, it is too deep uh, for high yield variety almond during the monsoon season and to wait after the almond harvesting. So the ro uh, late establishment of roby crop uh, and due to the late establishment of roby crop, uh, it the roby crop may damage due to the pre-monsoon cyclone. This is some uh, water logging condition uh, in the polar system. So uh, if I, we analyze the water level outside of the polar system and inside of uh, land, land level of ins uh, inside the polar, uh, we see the land elevation is here is 1.6 meter and uh, the lowest water, uh, water level is zero. So there is around 1.6 meter uh, difference uh, for the gravity drainage. So uh, around 80 percent of the land can be drainage uh, with this uh, uh, proper with proper management. 
So, improve uh, cropping and food security. So, in low, low saline zone, the pro productivity can be 15 to 21 ton per hectare per year. In medium saline zone, 7 to 10 ton per hectare per year. In high saline zone, rice could be the 3 ton per hectare, shim 300 kg per hectare and fish 3 ton per hectare. So, it will also add the nutrition in our um, productivity. So, if uh, the concluding the remarks, the coastal zone is rich with water resource offer huge potential of Bangladesh to make quantum lap in meeting future food security requirement and achieve SDG 1 and SDG 2 which is no poverty and zero hunger. So, uh, the water logging scenario, the main constant, uh, constant is water logging not the uh, saline. DNS is the key intervention and entry point for cropping intensification and productivity improvement in the polder of the coastal zone. Here we can see the gravity drainage uh, from the polder from one swiss gate. So, if improved production system is adopted 50 percent of coastal zone 4 to 5 million ton per year additional food grains can be produced which will help to achieve SDG 1 and SDG 2 by 2030. Thank you for listening to my uh, presentation. Yeah. Next person. He. Okay. Because the main author is is, is of sick, and if anybody questions, I think return to his email. I inform to you, your main author is sick. If anybody questions, then he can send your his email. Okay, thank you. Honorable Chairman of this session, distinguished scientist from home and abroad, dear fellow colleagues, good afternoon. Welcome to my presentation. My title, experiment title is Effect of Vermicompost on Sugarcane Yield and Carbon Accumulation in Soil. We know vermicompost is a carbon rich organic material which increases carbon compound in the soil. And the world temperature increases, uh, the uh, soil carbon is decreases. Uh, so, the soil fertility uh, status decreases. This is why we have selected this type of title. We have considered two objectives. Number one, to quantify the effect of vermicompost on sugar cane growth and yield and to determine the carbon accumulation in soils from vermicompost application. Methodology, we have followed the simple methodology. The vermicompost was prepared at office yard uh, from cow dung by using earthworm, Eugenia fetida in ring method or chari method. We have con uh, considered here eight treatment number uh, T1 control, T2 recommended fertilizer dose as per recommended fertilizer guide 2012, T3 and T4 recommended fertilizer dose along with vermicompost 2.5 and 5 ton per hectare respectively, T5 and T6 reduced uh, dose 75 percent recommended fertilizer dose along with vermicompost 2.5 and 5 ton per hectare and T7 and T8 reduced fertilizer dose as 50 percent along with vermicompost 2.5 and 5 ton per hectare. This is the pictorial view of process of preparing vermicompost. This is the simple method. 
initial soil status of the experiment. The uh, soils under study uh, texture was silt loam, pH is slightly acidic, organic carbon is low, total nitrogen very low, phosphorus and sulfur low and exchangeable potassium medium. Nutrient status of vermicompost, we can see here the organic carbon percent is very high, that is organic matter is very high. And, other, uh, and also uh, other nutrient here. Vermicompost and inorganic fertilizer rates, uh, there are uh, different rates used here. The effects of vermicompost and inorganic fertilizer treatments on the yield and yield attributes of sugar cane. Uh, we have considered eight treatment. Uh, among the eight treatment, we have recorded uh, T4, the highest tiller, millable can, and highest yield, where, uh, uh, where full dose of uh, recommended fertilizers along with five ton of vermicompost applied. Major nutrients content in leaf tissue of sugar can. This is also uh, T4 showed the very good, con, uh, very good results in leaf tissue nutrient. post harvest soil analysis, this is also uh, 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 found that the application of barbie compost increased the uh, organic carbon percent, that is uh, 0 0.099 percent and other nutrient also, uh, but uh, it is uh, uh, the uh, th this is the our result performance of bsri ag 42 uh, we have considered the bsri ag 42 uh, for the experiment uh, uh, this is the field condition uh, by applying of vermicompost with inorganic fertilizers our observation and conclusion uh, the increased strength of carbon accumulation in soil uh, over control are observed due to different levels of vermicompost application. The highest inorganic carbon was accumulated where 5 ton per hectare vermicompost was applied with recommended dose of chemical fertilizer in respect of highest yield, uh, sugarcane yield. So, it may be concluded that nitrogen 165, phosphorus 55, potassium 120, sulfur 45, magnesium 20 and zinc 2.5 kg per hectare along with vermicompost at the rate of 5 ton per hectare is the best combination for sugar can yield and carbon accumulation in soil. For maintaining soil fertility status at young Brahmaputra and Jomuna floodplain. Thank you everybody for patient hearing. Thank you all. Okay, thank you so much. If any questions, especially sugar cane. Uh, Mr. President, I have a one request to you. Mm. Uh, and one gentleman we left for Mamin Singh this evening. Okay. So after that uh, presentation, we can start our discussion. Okay. Okay, thank so, you. So, it is, it is, uh, it is Mr. Azizul Hawk and Mohsin Ali. You can present your paper now, so we can is discuss. Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Muhammad Azizul Hawk from Bina, Mohamed Singh. Uh, my paper titled is Integrated effects of harming compost with inorganic fertilizer on mustard, boro rice, diamond rice cropping pattern. Objectives was to investigate the integrated effects of harming compost and chemical fertilizers on the mustard, boro rice, diamond rice cropping pattern and soil fertility. Materials and methods uh, treatments T1 absolute control. There is no fertilizer, no harming compost is there. T2 was 100% chemical fertilizer 
T3 75 percent chemical fertilizer, T4 75 percent chemical fertilizer with farming compost at the rate of 4 ton per hectare. T5 was 85 percent uh, chemical fertilizer, T6 85 percent chemical fertilizer with 4 ton per hectare farming compost, T7 75 percent chemical fertilizer with 2 ton per hectare farming compost, T8 85 percent chemical fertilizer with 2 ton per hectare farming compost. We define the fertilizer zone on the basis of soil test. Cropping pattern was mustard, boro rice, tiamon rice. Locations were Binafar, Maimin Singh, Farmers Field, Dongpur, Shodor, and Farmers Field, Ishod, the Pabna. Properties of initial soils of different experimental field was that is, the, here is uh, properties of um, um, different uh, soil characteristics like pH, organic carbon, total N, available P, accessible K, available sulfur. Uh, we have in three uh, locations, there is a fertility level almost low to medium level fertility in all the locations. Uh, full uh, um, uh, rate of the 100% fertilizer rates on the basis of soil test for mustard, boro rice and tiamon rice at the different location. This is a 100% rate of fertilizer. From here we can calculate the 75% or 85% fertilizer. The my mentioning this is the uh, mustard, mustard this is the 85, 87, N, uh, P, 18, um, uh, and K, 47, Salpa, 10, uh, and Rongpur, 120, 20, 49, and issued the nitrogen was 87 kg per hectare, P was 19, K was 49, and Salpa was uh, 12. In uh, both uh, three crops, uh, all three crops and different locations, while the other rates were bit, a little bit different. Nutrient contents in applied barbing compost. The nutrients uh, nitrogen was 1.3 percent, phosphorus 0.6 percent, potassium 1.4 percent, and sulfur 0.38 percent. Amount of nutrients added for barbing compost in mustard or boro rice or tiamon rice from 2 ton or 4 ton per hectare barbing compost when we applied the nitrogen added 26 kg and 52 and when and P added for 12 and 12, 24, K added 28 and uh, 56 and sulfur added 7.6, 15.2 kg per hectare. Then this nutrient we reduct from the chemical fiber where 100% rate is there. Now the result, effect of harvey cost with inorganic fiber on seed and straw yield of mustard at the different locations, we can see that at Rongpur location we get the maximum yield from T6 is spent, where applied 85 percent uh, chemical fertilizer with 4 ton per hectare barbing compost, followed by the treatment T8, where applied, um, uh, applied 85 percent barbing compost with 2 ton per hectare barbing compost. When we increase the chemical fertilizer, the or reduce the um, um, organic fertilizer, the yield is higher rate uh, is comparable with the higher rate among and uh, and all the treatment we can see that where the, uh, we applied the barbing compost with reduced rate of barbing compost with chemical value that the comparable yield where get the T2 treatment where 100 percent applied 100 percent chemical files are like 1.72 per uh, ton per hectare where is um, where is um, uh, is statistically similar with other uh, treatment where we applied the barbing compost in any rate or any rate of chemical file that uh, similar result we also get in Ishodhi and my mentioning also that Ishodhi we got the highest result in T6 treatment and my mentioning also we get the highest result in uh, T6 uh, treatment 1.4 ton per hectare and always we get the lowest result in control treatment in everywhere. Effect of harmicost with inorganic file that on grain and straw yield of boro rice at the different locations the, we get the highest result in at Rongpur locations. We get the T6 treatment 6.64 ton per hectare, uh, which is the followed by the treatment T2, where we applied the 100 percent chemical fertilizer. The yield is comparable. Uh, similar results, uh, we also little bit similar result in we get the all location like issued and my machine also we get the highest result in T6 treatment. Uh, we, we, these results are always comparable with the T2 treatment. The effect of harvey with inorganic fiber on grain and soil of tiamon rice 
the, we get the highest result in T6, uh, T7 treatment. Here is little bit different from other two experiments. The T7, uh, that is 75% chemical fiber with two tone per hectare barbe compost, is sufficient to get the highest result, uh, which is the uh, comparable with the T2 treatment. That is, uh, there is applied 100% um, chemical fiber. We got the 5.17 tone per hectare, which is statically similar with the T T7 treatment. In other location also, we got the similar result with T7 treatment, which were compared with the T2 treatment. Total ANP and K uptakes by master as affected by different treatments. We got the highest uh, uh, PR, we got the highest uh, N uptake at Rongpur uh, location. We got the highest uh, in uh, T6 treatment that is 96.9 kg uh, per hectare N. Uh, followed by the treatment uh, um, uh, T2, that is 91.6 kg per hectare, and P27.3 and K84.3, uh, where issued we got the highest result is 68.4 kg per hectare at T6 treatment, and P and other nutrient also issued than my machine, we got the highest result in T6 treatment, where chemical fiber applied 85 percent with uh, with uh, 4 ton per hectare barium compost. Total NP and K uptakes by boro as affected by different treatments. We got the highest result in the um, uh, treatment T6 where uh, 100.8.5 uh, kg per hectare and nitrogen followed by the treatment T2 where applied 100% chemical fiber. Almost uh, many result we got the highest result in T6 treatment uh, at issue than my machine also. The NPK and K uptakes by Tuta and uh, by Tiamon uh, rice as affected by different treatments. We got the highest result uh, nitrogen uptake at Rongpur uh, by the treatment T7 88.3 followed by the uh, treatment T2. And uh, almost uh, all the parameters uh, in all the locations got the highest result in T7 treatment where applied uh, T75% uh, chemical fiber with a two ton per hectare farming compost, we always the lowest uptake in T1 treatment. Changes in nutrient status of post harvest soil at Rongpur, we got the, uh, we, we uh, collect the um, 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 post harvest soil every from every location, analyze the uh, PAs, organic carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium and sulfur. We got the different, uh, almost uh, almost similar with the control treatment, but little bit higher uh, nutrient was uh, nutrient and carbon, ca na carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur are recorded. Where we applied the uh, barbe compost, like in T8, T7, T6 treatment, T4, T5, or T4 treatment, little bit higher. At this is also change the nutrient status post harvest soil at Ishodi. Here also similar got the similar result, and uh, my machine also got the similar results. Conclusion: We can make the um, conclusion that about uh, 15 to 25 percent chemical fibers could be saved either with the application of 75 percent NPKs with four ton per hectare farming compost or 85 percent NPKs with two ton per hectare farming compost for mustard and boro rice. About 25% chemical fibers could be saved with the application of 75% chemical fibers with total per hectare barming compost for the cultivation of tea on rice. The results also reveal that soil amended with barming compost at the rate of 2 to 4 ton per hectare with reduced rates, 15 to 25% of chemical fibers NPKs is a good option to sustain the soil fertility in the mustard boro rice tea on cropping pattern. Now the some pictures like this. This is this is actually this work uh, funded by the um, uh, BRC, uh, BRC and it we too. Uh, uh, he he also visited our uh, experimental sites when we conducted the experiment. This is our barm compost production unit. This is the uh, picture uh, Rongpur, the mustard grown in different treatment. This is the. You, you can see the how how is the soil our soil without fertilizer the crop growth with no crop growth if it is high link variety they are not grown without fertilizer the different little bit different with the treatment this also issued the uh, my machine this is issued the also same uh, similar case the without fertilizer no crop 
the borrow rice, uh, borrow rice, the borrow rice, different picture. Now he is now our DZ, then our CEO, uh, different treatment, pharmacy should be filled. Now our former director of research, Dr. Hoshni Arabego, visited our field. The director is also busy at monitoring our experiment. Thank you all for patient hearing. Open the floor for five minutes. Any discussion to these sessions, the authors? Sir, uh, I have a question to uh, Dr. Professor Suleiman, sir. Why the biofertilizer uh, is not gaining popularity in Bangladesh? Is it a, a need policy support? Or Technological uh, soundness is uh, which is the responsibility and the second question to uh, Mr. Ashish uh, the salinity of the coastal belt is it uh, completely a climate induced hazard or some human induced hazard like the embankment in the Padda in Faraka is also responsible and for the last two presenters on vermicompost any cost benefit analysis are done about the vermicompost experiment? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ranjit Kundu. Kundu? Shen, Ranjit Shen. <laughs> Thank you for your yeah, question. <laughs> yeah, th th this is a common question, you know, always asked uh, in other conference also. Uh, scientists are working with uh, biofertilizer or developing biofertilizer. It's a long time, maybe 20 years or 30 years, maybe. Uh, some results are not uh, conclusive, some are conclusive. But the thing is that, you know, uh, the field trial is uh, less in number. You know, before going to uh, release the technology uh, to the farmers or uh, to the end user, so we need to go for extensive field trials. So field trials is comparatively, number of field trials is comparatively lower, uh, which is uh, uh, one of the reasons maybe. And also the, there is a lack of collaboration with the DAE. You know, the research organization doesn't have much collaboration with DAE in respect of this type of technology. For as for example, if you go for rice or other crop varieties, there is a good collaboration, but with the other other than crop, uh, you know, crop uh, varieties, the collaboration with other technologies, uh, technology like the fertilizer or something like that, you know, the collaboration is not enough, and uh, some in some cases there is ignorance of this fertilizer, you know, people doesn't understand what is fertilizer. Scientists are also uh, bit reluctant to communicate with the DAE. So there are lots of reasons, you know, that's why this technology is not getting popularity. Yeah. Do you like chemical fertilizer? Any? Subsidy, subsidy. For, yeah, for biofertilizer? We do, we don't, that is the cost of biofertilizer till today, you know. It is cheap, you know, it is produced, you know, we use microorganisms, you know, bacteria or something like that, you know. And we use the carrier material like pit soil, this and that. These are so, you know, inexpensive, so there is no question of cost, you know. If it is produced in the industry, uh, then it will come into, you know, the question is, you know, whether it is expensive or, or inexpensive. So we, until that uh, stage, you know, we cannot, con uh, uh, we cannot say that this is cost effective or not cost effective. This is cheap now compared to chemical fertilizer. You know, we can, if, you, if it, uh, you know, if it is popular, if, if the measure, proper measure can be taken to make it popular, then it will be very beneficial to the farmers you know, because this is a environment friendly you know technology the chemical I, as i mentioned chemical fertilizer you know makes lots of pollution so uh, in that case you know by fertilizer is uh, there is no pollution otherwise it improves soil health and you know improves soil quality thank you dr ranjishan yeah, thank you very much uh, in fact, I forgot the name of the presenter, but issue is all microorganisms. 
uh, in fact, soil uh, basically actually I'm the student of soil science, soil background, and uh, soil microbes are the it gives the soil biodiversity, soil ecosystem. But you know the you have mentioned uh, the Gajipur area also, and we have. Uh, uh, many industrial hot spots in uh, around the Dhaka city, you see Gajipur, Narangos, Noshing, the different places. And uh, there are a lot of uh, industries they have established but unplannedly. And uh, in, the, in those industries, you see textile, uh, dyeing, uh, different types of industries, they, ha they use the many toxic chemicals, the heavy metals, okay. So when this chemical goes to the water and then ultimately goes to the soil, it uh, contaminates the soil. And when this contaminates the soil, I think it has effect on the microorganisms also. So uh, you have, uh, you say in that place, you have that type of study or the research what happens to these uh, microorganisms? Uh, organisms? You say uh, that just in do this place, the agricultural lands that uh, have the industries and those who use the toxic chemicals and the heavy metals. Yeah, we have some study on uh, on the effect of you know toxic chemi uh, toxic heavy metals on microorganism that. Uh, uh, I didn't produce data here, but uh, we have some data. Definitely, you know, as the heavy metal, you know, they are heavy metal, the affects uh, soil, soil organism, and soil biodiversity, definitely. So, uh, you know, this is not also uh, only detrimental for the microbes, but it is also detrimental for the crop production as a whole. If you go to the Gazibur site, you will see the there is no crop in that field, you know, that the, where the effluents are coming from the industry. So there is no crop. The whole area is, is uh, you know, uh, just uh, just all the crops. So you will see the dirty water, dark color water there only, and uh, affects the crops, affects the microbes, and the ecosystem as well. So government has to take, you know, uh, proper you know, measure to control this, you know, uh, the coming out, the influence coming, uh, coming out from the industry. So this is, uh, uh, this actually, is what I, government yeah. has to take place, take a uh, proper role to control this. Actually, I raised this uh, question because I have the personal study there mm -hmm. and uh, I have tested the soil of the contaminated and uncontaminated areas. Then I have seen the the the, the heavy uh, the metal con contaminated soil is higher, and then uncontaminated soil is less heavy metals. So that's why I said that uh, uh, was the effect of uh, you say uh, microbes there also. Whether it affects the, this, this contamination or these heavy metals or the toxic chemicals, whether they affect those microbes. And is there any specific study of that area? Yeah. That side is this question. Yeah, we have some study here. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, the heavy metal affects uh, soil mechanism drastically. It reduces the number, mm -hmm. it reduces the activity of the organism. So there are lots of results, but I you know it's, it's a, you know, I could not uh, produce all the results there, but there are some studies, yeah, definitely. As I mentioned, we have so many students work on this aspect also, you know, microbes, also with heavy, heavy metal. Okay, yeah. thank you yeah. very much. You. Uh, if any questions, so we can uh, sit down in the key, uh, tea and coffee time. Then, Should sir. Should we answer uh, salinity reason? Is the salinity, is the climate-induced hazard or also some human-induced